What's good, my beautiful people? This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomat from Come On Now, the podcast, bringing you another edition of Rudy's Rant. I got some stuff to rant about today. But before I get into that, please remember to like and subscribe and share this video, as well as following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Come On Now Podcast and on X at Come On Now Pod. I want to thank everyone for your continued support of our channel. We just broke 500,000 views in under six months. We're over 900 subscribers. We're trying to get over 1,000 by the end of July. Please help make that happen. So I greatly appreciate all of that. Let's jump right into it. Yesterday, Caitlin Clark busted out the first triple-double in WNBA history as a rookie. There have only been 35 triple doubles in the 27, 28 years history of the of the league. And Caitlin Clark is the first rookie to ever do it. She was toying with it for a few games. She had, she fell one rebound short against uh, Phoenix last week. Yesterday, she got it going for 19, 13 and 12 in a big come from behind victory over the New York Liberty, who came in with the best record in the WNBA. That was the fourth time that the Indiana Fever played the New York Liberty and the first time they got that win, which clearly obviously was the biggest win of the season for the Indiana Fever. She got, she got the record when the Fever, were, the Fever was down 11 points in the fourth quarter. So at that time, it's a hollow, it, it, it's, a, it's an accomplishment, but it's largely hollow if you can't find a way to win the game, right? Well, they make a big, big comeback and outscore the fee- the Liberty by 16 in the final eight minutes of the game and pull out an 83-78 win. So now that triple double is even bigger because it came on the you know on the on the back of a big time win. They were down 75-69. Uh, Clark goes to the rim, draws an and one on a on a on a, on a shot, um, and then on the next possession or so, uh, Kelsey Mitchell drops a three, ties the game. And from there, it was all fever, man. They, they came up with a humongous win. So kudos to them. Now, why am I ranting? I am ranting because after the game, Sabrina, Sabrina Ionescu, who's real good at showing love on the court before game, blah, blah, blah. In the post-game press conference, Sabrina Ionescu made a couple of comments about this team, about this game that are pretty overall pathetic, if you ask me. They're just another way to dismiss accomplishments. Not just dismiss the accomplishment of Caitlin Clark, but dismiss the accomplishment of the Indiana Fever. Take a look for what she said. No, we play Liberty basketball, um, you know, but understanding, like, this, uh, this is their Super Bowl game. I mean, you know, we've beaten them three times this year already. Um, we knew they were going to come into this game really hungry and it's tough to beat a team four times like it, it's just tough in our league, especially with how every team has just grown and especially this young team. Um, you've been able to just see how much they've grown um, just throughout the first half of the season. So She refers to <laughs> this game for the Indiana Fever as their Super Bowl. OK, Super Bowl, right? So basically what she's implying is that this is the biggest game of the year for the Indiana Fever. Um, and because they've lost three times to them, largely in blowouts, you knew they'd come out fired up and you knew they'd come ready to play and blah, blah, blah. All that nonsense that goes into mental warfare. Fine. Yes, Indiana Fever came out hot, largely because of Caitlin Clark. Largely because of Caitlin Clark. They came out hot, had an early lead. Led at the half and fell behind in the third when they could not make layups. Indiana Fever has a tendency to have these hot flashes and then very, very cold flashes. And their cold flashes a lot of times have them getting blown out of games that they're otherwise in for a period of time. In the third quarter, <laughs> the Liberty put the foot on the gas and took a lead and pushed it to 11. They led by 11 in the fourth. And then Indiana makes that comeback. 
But the problem that I have with a comment like that is that you're implying that they're not playing hard in other games. You're implying that they pray, they played harder today or yesterday than they did that they will tomorrow or the day after. What what good comes from saying that it's they, 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 it's their Super Bowl? They're nine and thirteen. This is halfway through the season. This is a we're at the halfway point of the WNBA season. So what if Caitlin Clark after that game decides to say I don't know? Um, well, you know, you talk about it, the Super Bowl. And that's the thing about Caitlin Clark, that she's really not, she doesn't go back and forth with this stuff. She really has, does a really good job of brushing it off because she's better than a lot of people. Most people couldn't take the type of verbal nonsense that she's gotten from colleague, colleagues in, in, the, in the WNBA. What if she had said, well, you know, you double and triple team me 70 feet from the basket. You don't double and triple team anybody 70 feet from the basket. You double, triple team her on every pick and roll. You crash double her all the time on pick and roll. You defend her differently than you defend any other guard in the WNBA. In fact, she is defended differently than the way the Fever defends Sabrina Ionescu. No one's guarding Sabrina Ionescu at half court. No one's guarding Sabrina Ionescu 30 feet from the rim. But Caitlin Clark is getting double teamed 30 feet from the rim on pick and roll. So what if she said, well, you treat playing me like you're playing in the Super Bowl. A better analogy, a better example would be game five of the WNBA Finals. Since there's only five games in the WNBA Finals, you're playing me every time like it's game five of the WNBA Finals. That would look pretty pathetic, right? That would look that would look weak, right? Because it 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 would it paints the picture of oh, are they not supposed to play you hard? Exactly. So what you're implying is that the Fever played harder and you didn't play as hard. Yet you led by 11 points with eight minutes to go. Or maybe you're just upset that you missed back to back wide open threes in the final 30 seconds. Because Sabrina Ionescu had two opportunities in the final 30 seconds to knock down wide open threes, and she missed them both. Indiana had defensive lapses, as they always do, at the wrong time. She has one wide open shot from the top of the key. She misses. She has another wide open shot from the corner. She misses. And Indiana comes away with the victory. So would it have been their Super Bowl if you had won the game? Or maybe you should guard her one-on-one -on -one and play the game the way people play at the park. Maybe you shouldn't double-team her 70 feet from the rim. It just looks really ridiculous when you sit here and say that they treat it like it's like their Super Bowl. No, it's not. It's another game. It's a game they need to win. A game they need to win. They need to win a lot of games. They're 9-13. and 13. Now they're 9-13. and 13. They were 8-13. and 13. They're trying to make the playoffs. The same way you're trying to be the number one seed in the, in the WNBA and have home court advantage throughout the playoffs, they're trying to make the playoffs. So every game is important, just like the next game will be as important as this last game because they need to keep winning to give themselves an opportunity to not be a seven or an eight seed and maybe push themselves up the standings, which will be very difficult. But it doesn't make that game the Super Bowl or game five of the WNBA Finals. It's just this incessant need to minimize and diminish the accomplishment accomplishments of this of, of this team when they're successful, of Clark when she's successful, which is largely all the time. You guard her differently, you game plan for her differently, you attack her differently, and then you say, oh, it's their Super Bowl. No, my dear, it's your Super Bowl, just the same, apparently. Because if you're going to sit here and say it's, her super, it's their Super Bowl, then it's your Super Bowl as well. Because the way you defend that, defend Caitlin Clark is different than you defend any other guard in the WNBA. Facts. I just finished watching the Chicago Sky-Seattle Storm game. Seattle won the game by 13 points, I think it was. Chicago had it down to three and then had a 12-point run that, that pushed it back out to 15. 
Jewel Lloyd against the Indiana, Indiana Fever looks like a Hall of Famer. She doesn't miss. The last two games were the Chicago Sky. She can't make a shot. She missed a point-blank, wide-open, fast-break layup that would have made it a 13-point game. Instead, three, three possessions later, the game is down to three. But the way Chicago defended Jewel Lloyd, who is considered one of the better guards or one of the best guards in the WNBA, not even close to how they defend Caitlin Clark. Not being guarded 25 feet from the rim. Not being guarded at half court. This is just the what it is. It's par for the course. But sitting here and diminishing what they just did and diminishing their accomplishment and diminishing her accomplishment, she had the first triple-double as a rookie in WNBA history. Yes, Sabrina Ionescu has four triple-doubles in her career. Caitlin Clark will probably have two, probably have at least one more triple-double before this season is over. So now she's had another record that no one else has. You talk about hating people. You talk about, you know, sideways compliments. This is just another example of the sideways commentary that comes from other teams. Not to mention, earlier this week, Brianna Stewart says, Angel Reese does everything. <laughs> this is, this, it, it, never, it doesn't stop. Angel Reese does everything. Caitlin Clark can only shoot. She only shoots. Well, I hope you got a lesson in 19 points, 12, 13 assists, and 12 rebounds. So clearly she doesn't just shoot. She creates, facilitates, and rebounds. Damn, Brianna. Had a bad day, I guess. I don't believe in that you I don't believe in that poking the bear thing or none of that crap. I can tell you this. She damn sure doesn't just shoot. Her entire offense, the entire offense runs through her. While they, were, while they were running your ass on a track meet and pushing the ball down the floor and you were chasing the bigs down the floor who were getting layup after layup after layup off Caitlin Clark passes, I wonder what you were thinking. Were you thinking that this is only – that all she can do is shoot? I don't know. But it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. They hate her because they ain't her. They hate her because she gets the pub they wish they had. They hate her because she gets the adulation they wish they had. They hate her because the reality is today, right now, she's the best goddamn point guard in WNBA and probably the best guard in the WNBA period. Because the way they defend her is different than how anyone defends her. And it damn sure wasn't her Super Bowl. She's a rookie. She'll have many great moments in the future. This was a basketball game, mid-season, pre-All-Star game. And more and more and more, that omission from the Olympic team looks more and more and more stupid. She's set, tied for second in the league in assists. She's in the top 15 in scoring. She's in the top 20 in every major statistical category. Only three players are in that same position. Nafisa Collier from Minnesota and Brianna Stewart from the Liberty. And the third is Caitlin Clark. So, Sabrina, you're a Super Bowl. You had three of them already. We know it. I guess Caitlin got hers. What are your thoughts? You think Sabrina Ionescu is just as much a hater as all these other ones? Or do you think that it was their Super Bowl? Love to hear your comments. Remember to follow us, like, subscribe. Come on now, podcast at Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and come on now, pod at X. Come on now.